Hey, 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 happy days. Sharon Hornell from here. You can call me Pajama Grandma some days. Yeah, I do have my pajamas on. I admit it. I also remembered my microphone today. I was listening to something yesterday, and I've been getting the reminder um, about microphones, and I've been listening to a lot of things about YouTube and video quality, and, and that sound is the most important thing. And actually, I think I was listening to something about a podcast, not so much videos, YouTube videos, but I realized, okay, I've got... This little lavalier mic, why am I not using it? And part of why I'm not using it is, I, I have no excuse. I was going to say because, sorry about the hand. Um, <clears throat> part of why I haven't been using it is I just forget. I put it aside and I forget to plug it in. I've got a new ring light, which is interesting. I can see it in my alien eyes, right? Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> just kind of off today. Um, I was using the expression, the idiom in a nutshell, and I'm like going, blah, 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 not really talking, coughing today. Some days are just rough for video. <clears throat> Some days not so much. Some days everything just flows. And other days it's like, why am I doing a video today? Because I'm off. I'm, I'm not feeling awesome. Although it's awesome Monday, so I should feel awesome. I'll feel awesome. As soon as I go outside, spin around and yell, I feel awesome. Because it works for me. It just, <clears throat> if I remind myself, and choose how I want to feel, I'm much more likely to feel that way. If I say I'm feeling grumpy and depressed, guess what? I can find a way to feel grumpy. Probably not depressed, can't usually get there, but I can find things to get irritated by and get grumpy. Why would I want to do that? I want to set myself up for, fail for success, not failure. So I wrote packing on my list today because I'm packing. I'm packing and moving and at least getting a whole lot of stuff in storage to work on the house while we move. And I, it gets me discombobulated, but what I have been doing while I'm doing that is listening to a lot of things about YouTube. I'm doing a 90 day challenge, a 90 day YouTube challenge with the amazing sexy boss, Heather and Havenwood. And I think we're on day 13 today. Yes. Yes. Day 13. So as I'm doing that, I want to make sure <clears throat> I am tapping into the greatest minds in YouTube video because I'm definitely not it and learn from what they've done, what they've been doing. So I tapped into Sunny Letter Ducci yesterday and I listened to a lot of Sean Kennel too and found out that they actually kind of started out at the same time and were peers and helped each other out with different things and the importance of collaborating with other people. I learned a lot yesterday just listening while I was packing up my son's room and doing stuff. My son thought he'd gotten everything he wanted out of the house and was done packing up his room and I've been in there for two days now. so. I don't think he was done. Now he's got a pretty big room, but there's a lot of things in that room. So doing that, I'll probably try to finish that one up today so I can get back to moving the stuff to storage that needs to go to storage from the holiday closet and from things like that. So nobody cares about that. No one cares about my packing. And, you know, it's kind of like any other big project, though. You have these big plans that you're going to pack and you're going to do these things in an organized way and you're going to make sure everything gets labeled and like things get put in certain boxes in certain places and when it really comes down to the wire and implementing the plan <clears throat> everything gets thrown up in the air my packing is no exception then my challenges are no exception i map out a strategy and just an outline of what i want to do when i'm doing a challenge and it inevitably changes. I'm trying to think if I've ever done a challenge where I mapped out like a 30 day challenge and I, mean, I guess five day challenges, I'll do the five days, the things I've planned out because they're so short that you have to really, <coughs> excuse me, you have to really consider what you're going to do in that short period of time. And once you map that out, you're not really going to change that. Maybe on the next time you do something like that, you will. But during that five days, it's pretty hard to course correct in a five-day period. There's key things you want to do to get the result and help people get the result. So you're not going to change in a five-day period. But in a 30-day period, there's a lot of wiggle room to change around your things and do different days. For example, what I'm doing today for the YouTube challenge, the 90-day challenge, is last week, the last four days have been what I had originally planned to be like on day 40 or day, yeah, 41 through 44 uh, were what I had planned for then. And I did those in the last four days. So there's a lot of wiggle room based on the people that you're serving and what do they want and what works for them. It determines a longer challenge, what I'm going to provide, what I'm going to teach people when I'm going to teach it. And the same is true, I guess, of my content. Although my content is pretty much 
me driven. I need to switch. That's one of the huge major changes I need to make in my content. Now that I know I can make a lot of content and I don't have any problem creating content, it's a matter of doing research and saying, okay, this is what my ideal perfect prospect really wants or my perfect customer wants. They don't want all the stuff about mindset or right now. They want strategies and techniques and tactics. And once they start implementing the strategies, techniques, and tactics, then they want some more mindset things. Then they're open to those, but they need to get some quick results fast. That was a little redundant. They need to get some you know, positive wins in the beginning in order to continue working toward what it is that they want. Just like when we start our businesses, I like to think of it as me golfing. I'm a terrible golfer. I, I can't see, I have no eyes. And so I would hit the ball and I'd always have to have somebody tell me where the ball went and, I, and go kind of basically lead me to where my ball was because I never knew where it was. And then point me in the direction of where I'm supposed to hit the ball for to get to the hole. So golfing for me was, you know, it wasn't, it was fun to be outdoors. It was fun to be with people, but it wasn't really very fun because of my visual challenges. But I would go along and I would do it every once in a while. And every once in a while, you'd get that awesome hit, right? <clears throat> once in a while, I would actually be able to hit it and hit the green. Like, not a hole in one. Never had one of those, but I could never see the hole, right? But I would get on the green and I'd be so ecstatic. So I would golf and I would go back again because I got that one little win. I think golf is like the only sport like that where people, people can be terrible at it. And they'll keep going back because they get one little, one good stroke on the golf course or something. Uh, I know there's people that are a lot more competitive about golf, but I'm obviously not. But that reminds me of, you know, how we have to approach what it is that we're doing in our life and in our business. We have to focus on the wins, not on the things that would kick us out of the game, would get us to quit the game. We have to realize that our failures are where we learn lessons. The things that we try that don't work out perfectly are the stepping stones to getting what we want. And a lot of times we like to beat ourselves up and say, oh, I tried this twice and it didn't work for me. Therefore, I'm going to quit. I'm not that kind of person. I can't have a business because I tried this, you know, and, and nobody wanted to buy it from me. Well, nobody wanted to buy it from you probably because you weren't sold on it yet. You weren't confident in what you were offering to people. Or maybe you're offering them something that everybody else on the planet's offering them and you weren't sharing it in a unique or special way. You weren't adding any part of you to what you were offering. So people were saying no. <coughs> so packing, planning, moving, projects, big projects of any kind. I find one day at a time, break it down into little chunks and little pieces and just keep moving forward. That's what I'm working on today. 90 day challenge. Uh, I don't, I don't even know what else I've got going on. I've got customers and clients and consulting gigs that each little one has to have something done with it, but nothing massively major. I do have to finish one funnel today for a customer. I should have had it done yesterday, but I spent the whole day in my son's room and with my family because it was Mother's Day. So on Mother's Day, we like to spend time with those we love and care about, especially if we gave birth to them, right? So that is about all I've got today. I've got to get to work. I want to quick make my two videos. And I'm, I'm thinking about, I decided yesterday that I really need to be doing what I'm teaching because I'm doing it for the assignment to demonstrate people to people what to do, but I'm not doing it for my, my target audience. And I need to transition and tell people today that that's what I'm going to start doing. So instead of the keywords and the titles and the things being written for the challenge, or I have to do a whole separate video. And maybe that's what I'll do is I'll do the instructions for the challenge, my demonstration of doing the challenge. And then I'll also just quickly reshoot the video for my target audience. Because if I want to get results, I have to stop sharing it in the 90 day challenge. And I have to share it with my target audience, right? I have to demonstrate what I'm doing actually on my target audience so I can show the results of what I'm getting. And, and some stuff's going to work for me just like it will for them. Some stuff's not going to work for me just like it will for them. And I want to demonstrate that, not just demonstrate the, the skill or the technique or the, the subject for today, but demonstrate the results that it will or will not get you or may or may not get you as you're implementing the steps every day over the 90 day challenge. So I did decide I need to do that challenge today. So I'm either gonna make two or three videos today, probably just two today because it's more of an instructional thing, but I might go back and put thumbnails on and tweak the last four days that we did because they're our core content. So that's what I'll do today. 
and hang out with my beautiful granddaughter. So what have you got going today? Go out, make it an awesome day, and I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. If I can help you in any way, shape, or form, just hit me up in the comments below or direct message me. I'm easy to find. Sharon Horn Elstrom or the Pajama Grandma, just Pajama Grandma, G-R-A-M-M-A, -M -M -A, on just about every major platform. That's it. Take care. Catch you tomorrow. Bye.